So why don't we go ahead, let's start off with the word of prayer. Let's come before our Father in heaven. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord, just for your awesome presence that fills us and fills this very place. And we ask you, Lord, just to continue to let your holy presence flow deep and strong because, Lord, we, we want more of you. And as we truly decrease, may you increase in every way, Father. Because, Lord, we know it's not about us. This life is truly not about us. We want it to be all about you. So, Lord, we say have your way. Because, Lord, we come ready. We come prepared to receive of your goodness. And we desire nothing but you. So, Lord God, we place this time all into your hands. I pray you will just take over this service completely as you speak through me, Father. I pray that your glory's presence, your Shekinah glory, will fill this entire place. Lord, we love you. We praise you. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. But if you take a look at your notes, if you don't have notes, you can raise your hand and someone can get you notes. Okay? All right. Well, as you all may well know, we started a new sermon series called The Ultimate What? Guarantees of God. And, you know, we live in a world, you know, which many people believe, right? You got to look out for yourself, right? Because people will tell you, hey, it's a doggy dog world out there. And if you're not careful, you're going to be used and you're going to be abused. And it sounds like, man, is this how the world really is? And, you know, one of my non-believing friends used to say, you know, there are no guarantees in life, Ben. You just can't trust anybody. You know, you only can trust yourself. And, you know, it sounds so depressing. Because I got to tell you, a lot of my unbelieving friends will believe this. But aren't you glad as Christians, we don't believe that this is true. Because we have an almighty God, a living God that sees us. He knows us, and He promises guarantees to us if we choose to live according to His ways. You know, last week we talked about God's promise of joy and happiness to us, His children, right? Well, this week we're talking about God's guarantee of direction and guidance to who? To us, if we choose to follow Him wholeheartedly. Remember, it's still a choice you have to make. You don't have to follow Him. But if you don't, you're pretty much on your own. And whatever happens, happens. And you cannot blame God. Because a lot of people still do blame God, even though they don't look to God, even, they don't, even though they don't trust in God. And it's, isn't it true, as human beings, you know, sometimes we need to have guidance in our lives, you know, so that we're not going to keep messing things up because, you know, sometimes we're pretty good at messing things up. Don't you think? It could be our relationships could be whatever, you know, it could be your career, you know, it's because sometimes we make bad choices, isn't that true? But when we have the Holy Spirit, when we know God is present in our lives, you know, He's right there, He's speaking to us, He's directing us, you know, and especially as children, we need our parents to speak wisdom upon our lives so that we're not going to keep on making the same mistakes over and over and over and you know they will be the one to point us in the right direction but i gotta tell you something you know sometimes it's the other way around i gotta tell you this story i never told benson i would talk about this but i'm going to anyway you know you know just recently uh, i don't embarrass my son anyway so but okay i gotta tell you just recently i started working out with benson at the gym and because we work out in the mornings right I usually will take a shower after we're done because I'm all sweaty and I'm sticky and I'm all yucky, right? So one day I was about to hit the showers and he was in the locker room with me. Benson said to me, hey, dad, where are your slippers? And I said to him, eh, son, I just go barefoot, no need, <laughs> you know? So I, I then proceeded to tell him, you know, sometimes when I went camping with the guys when I was much younger, right, I, I would just rough it out and... Uh, I don't take shower for days, you know. <laughs> and so I said to him, just be a man. No need the slippers. And, and then my son, in all his wisdom, this is what he says. But dad, I just recently read on the internet that the shower floor is considered to be much more filthy than even a toilet bowl. He says, think about it, dad. All the dead skin <laughs> and all the stuff that falls from your body as you wash yourself. And they're all strangers. 
You don't know them, Dad. I got to tell you, I looked at my son and I said, son, sadly, I don't feel so manly anymore. <laughs> and, and from then, son, right, I always brought my slippers when I took a shower there, you know. And I'm so glad my son gave me this piece of wisdom when I needed it, you know, because, you know, here's the thing, right? We all need wisdom. And sometimes, yeah, we can hear it from our other brothers and sisters in faith. But we know God ultimately gives us his word. Amen? He gives us what we need so that we're going to have great success. We're going to have great victories in our lives. And we know that Father God, he's always going to be there to guide us and direct us. And whenever we're heading in the direction that is leading to harm, leading to destruction, I'm going to tell you, the Holy Spirit is going to give you alerts. He's going to tell you, don't go there! <laughs> and sometimes he will speak it so clearly. We got to listen intently for the voice of God every single day of our lives. So here's a question. Is there a guarantee that God will guide and direct us throughout our lives? Well, the question there is, what does the Bible guarantee to us about God's direction and guidance in our lives? Well, look at point number one. It says the Bible guarantees that if you put your trust, everyone say trust, your trust in God, he will direct your paths. And it's really up to you. Are you going to have the kind of trust in God that believes in him for anything? Because look what the scripture says here in Proverbs 3, 5 or 6. Ready? Read it together. Ready? Go. Trust in the Lord with what? All your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall what? He shall direct your path. So it says trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And with all of your heart, it means you love him entirely. So much so, you know for a fact he ain't going to let you down. That you can trust in him. You can know he will not fail you. Because trusting in God means believing in him fully. Over the top. I'm talking without questioning him. And knowing that his ways are always the best ways. Amen? That's why it says lean not upon your own understanding. Because sometimes... He may do something that is totally opposite of what you asked for. And a lot of times people come to me and they kind of go, Pastor Ben, I don't get God. <laughs> What's up with God? I asked for this and I'm getting this. And I said, what does the Bible say? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not upon your own understanding. You don't have to understand it. You simply trust and know God will always bring forth his very best because he doesn't stir you wrong. The Bible says he will not fail you. You know, there was this a television program that preceded the 1988 Winter Olympics. And it featured blind skiers. Imagine, yeah, I heard, you, you heard me right. Blind skiers that were being trained for the slalom skiing. Uh, possible as that sounds, right? And what happened was they were paired with uh, sighted skiers and the blind skiers were taught on the flats, on flat surface, right, flat land, how to make right and left turns. And, and when that was mastered, they were taken to the slalom slope. Yes, no longer flat. <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm talking slalom slope like this kind, right? And, and guess what? There they were with their sighted partners, you know, and they were skiing right beside them shouting, left, right. And as they obeyed the commands, they were able to negotiate the course and cross the finish line, depending solely on the sighted skier's word. It was either complete trust or what? Catastrophe. You had to have total trust in your sighted skier. And isn't this a vivid picture of the Christian life? You know, in this world, you know, we are in rea reality blind. We're spiritually blind. But because we have Jesus Christ, because we have the Holy Spirit, guess what? He tells us what course to take. He says, go left, go right, go straight. Don't go there. You know, you got to realize this is what the Holy Spirit does. And if you're in the Word of God, He will speak to you constantly. And we must rely solely on the Word of the only one who is truly sighted. And who is that? Jesus Christ. It's God Himself. 
And his word will give us the direction we need to what? To finish the course. Because, yeah, sometimes in this course of life, yeah, it can get pretty hectic. <laughs> Come on, who knows what I'm talking about? Sometimes you can feel like you want to pull the hairs out of your head, even though I don't have too many hairs left, right? You go, oh, ah. Oh. And it's like, the first thing we should do is call on the name of Jesus. You know, when life gets tough, brothers and sisters, man, make it a habit. I don't call it a habit of calling on the name of Jesus, calling on the very one who loves you more than you shall ever know. I want you to look at point number two now. It says, the Bible guarantees that God will what? Direct the steps of the righteous man. Are you a righteous man? Well, well just imagine this for a second. Your life is like an open Field. Just picture that. Your life is an open field, filled with the bountiful provisions of God. Just get this in your mind. Just try to picture this. You have numerous trees that bear only sweet and plump fruit. Oh, mango season now, yeah? Oh, imagine that plump fruit right in your hand. And, and there's a various assortment of colorful and vivid vegetables of which you can eat to your fill. And your land is teeming with prime cattle, and it's truly flowing of milk and honey. And just imagine, you can have prime rib anytime you want. <laughs> but here's the thing, right? We, we know this is how it kind of was like with Adam and Eve before the great fall. Everything was good. Everything was fine and dandy. I mean, provisions galore, right? You eat to your fill. And, and just think about this. Every day, God is, God is directing your steps right into the pathway of his flowing and abundant provisions. He's always telling you, oh, go here. If you want more uh, lychee, go this way. You know, and you want more mango, go that way. And imagine, every day, he's directing you. He's kind of like nudging you to walk right into his blessing. Let me ask you, is this, is this something that is true of every Christian life? It should be. But unfortunately, it isn't, is it? Sometimes we don't listen to God. Sometimes we want to do things our own way. Because we think, hey, I think this is better than what God can give me here. This looks better. And suddenly we're off track. We're going to places we shouldn't be. And, you know, here's the thing. God, he will direct you. He will show you how to get greater and greater blessings in your life. You know why? Because you've been good. What do I mean by good? No, you've been doing what the Word of God has been telling you, and you've been showing to God that you desire His Word more than anything else. Look what it says here in Psalm 37, 23. Read that with me. Ready? Go. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. The steps of a good man are what? order god orders it he will say every step of this person i want it to be good because i delight in how he lives his life i delight in the very fact he lives for me but here's a question how does one become righteous because here's the thing when we talk about good it's the very fact that we know we've been made righteous in the eyes of God. Let's look at what Romans 2.13 says. Let's read it together. Ready? Go. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law and will be declared righteous. Okay, that's where we see. We are declared righteous when what? We obey the law. And here's the thing I want you to understand. We obey the law not because we're forced to. We obey the law because we love God. It's by His grace that we are saved. Amen? Because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, it's not something we force ourselves to do. If you really know Jesus, you will obey His commands. You will do what He says because that's how much you love Him. That's what the Bible says. You show to God how much you love Him by how much you obey His word. And the more you love God, the more He will reward you the more he will let his blessings flow in your life. And this person will not only love God's word, he will actually do it. And that's true for all of us. We have to make a choice 
to do it. And it's not like, you know, you're always like, always hurting yourself or pinching yourself. Okay, just do it. You know, or don't do it. You know, and we hurt ourselves and, you know. No, we, we do it because the love of Christ dwells in us. And we do it because that's how much we love him. And here's the other thing I want you to understand. You know, even though the enemy, he ain't going to leave you alone. You know, he, he will make it difficult for all of us, right? He'll try to plant multiple booby traps and dangerous snares all over your land. Even though it's supposed to be so pretty, so wonderful. I mean, so vivacious. That's a good word. <laughs> you know, I mean, guess what? He's going to plant booby traps. You know, he, he's going to disguise it and he's going he's gonna to try to get you ensnared. And here's the thing. If you know that you're in prayer, you're trusting in God, Father God will always lead you away from these traps because there are many of them. I'm going to tell you, there's going to be choke traps all over the place. And, and he's always going to see to it that as you know his heart, God will alert you. He will warn you of impending danger so that no harm, that no evil will befall your life. Because the enemy, he's working overtime. Especially if he knows you're drawing closer and closer to God, the devil is going to work harder to try to pull you down. He's going to try to get you to the point where you're going to start to get distracted. You're going to look around at things you're not supposed to be looking at, even though the Holy Spirit says to you, look at me, child, look at me. But we get distracted. We start looking around, and suddenly we may get back into the world. You know, I've got to tell you, Look what that scripture says here in Proverbs 14, 27. Let's read that first. Ready? Go. The fear of the Lord is a what? A fountain of life. Turning a person from what? The snares of death. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. Do you fear God? Not to say you're afraid of him. You're hiding in your closet because you're afraid of Papa God. No. It means that you realize there are consequences to your sin. He you know that he loves you so much, he ain't going to let you get away with your sin. All right? And so if you know that God has his best in mind for you, you know, he may discipline you at times. But the very fact is, ultimately it says he will turn you from the snares of death. Because sometimes it's laid out all over the place. As you all may well know, right, we are now seeking a new place for our office and our church meeting place. Keep praying for that because we're still looking, right? And, you know, because, you know, the, they, are, they are having plans to demolish this entire building. So by next year, this building will no longer be here. They're going to replace it with two towering condominiums, okay? And it's called Sky, Sky Tower, I think that's what, that's what it's called. And they will demolish everything in sight in here. So, and for this, you know, particular building that, you know, John and I wanted to see because, you know, we've been looking at all different places and, you know, my wife, uh, John Lee called the realtor and, you know, this realtor that she talked to was really nice and sweet and she kind of made it like, oh, no problem. Okay, we will schedule time and, and we'll show you the property. Okay, I said, okay, cool. And so John Lee said, all right, we will meet this day and this time. And so we, we me and John Lee, we sought the, the Lord's guidance and, and, you know, just several hours before we're supposed to see it, right, the realtor calls and, and says that, you know what? I forgot to bring the key to the building. So we, we cannot see it today, and we got to reschedule. Okay, so okay, no problem, we'll reschedule then, okay? At first it was like, oh man, I was like excited. I was thinking, okay, let, let's go and see. Maybe this is what God wants for us, right? And so we reschedule, and, and, and we schedule for like a couple days later. Get this now. Just an hour that we're supposed to see it, the realtor calls us to let us know that she has car trouble. The car doesn't start, and it seems like, okay, we're not going to be able to meet again. So we're thinking, okay, we got to reschedule. And she, she just said, okay, just call me. Then call me tomorrow. So John Lee, you know, calls her up the next day and leaves a message, and she doesn't respond back. And we're like, what's going on here, right? And John Lee left a couple messages, and and we're thinking, what in the world is going on? How come, you know, it's not going through? We're praying about this. 
And, and normally someone would get upset by now. Say, oh, what's wrong? I'm going I'm to report her to her, her uh, boss or whatever, right? And, 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 you know, we just said, you know, to each other, me and John Lee, we said, let's not get anxious about this because we trust God. And we know he has a reason for everything that happens under the sun. Amen? Everything that happens in our lives, he knows about it. And maybe, guess what? He's trying to protect us. Maybe he's redirecting us. It's okay. Because a lot of times, when we don't get what we want from God, but I've been praying, Pastor. I've been on my knees. Sometimes I'm on my face. Well, you know what? God knows that. And he's honored by that. But still, you must trust in him. You must know that God, he wants to bring his best. And sometimes, to bring his best, it can't be done your way. Because it has to be done what? His way. So don't fret. Because I'll be honest, sometimes I fret. But God, I don't understand it. Explain it to me, God. And sometimes we get like that. But then we've got to remind ourselves, no, God, he's looking out for my best. He wants his best in my life. Amen? And you got to keep reminding yourself of that because a lot of times, right, we, we will start to get frustrated. And, and here's the thing. When you have this kind of mindset, you save yourself from a lot of grief, a lot of anxiety. When you always remind yourself that God has his best in mind. And sometimes things don't make sense. It's okay. Take a deep breath. Sometimes I got to take multiple deep breaths. <laughs> and I say, God, slow me down. God, help me to trust in you even more. And we know that God, he delights in us, you know, when we choose to live a life that is pleasing to him. Because if he knows that you're following his word, you're, you're not always questioning him, he knows that, that you are doing things his way. He delights in you. The question is, do you really believe that we have a Papa God that really wants to be involved in his children's lives and, and wants nothing more than to intervene and to provide for their every need? You know, that's what he does. He is pro our provider. He gives us his very best. And I want you to look what it says here in Hebrews 11.6. Read it with me. Ready? Go. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. What does he do? He rewards those. If you seek him, I mean, because we don't have to seek him, right? When things go wrong, things go haywire in our lives, we can start turning to everyone else except God. But no, if you earnestly seek him, what does he do? What does it say there? He rewards you. Go to God first. And, and as I've told you in previous sermons, right, I, I got to tell you, you know, yeah, I talk a lot about it because it's true, right? When John Lee prays for a parking space, <laughs> she always gets the best one, you know? I mean, no matter, you know, how packed the parking lot is, no matter how busy the place is, right, she would always get the space that's closest to the entrance of the building. And sometimes, you know, me and, and, and John Lee, we would drive separately. And I'm with Benson, and, you know, John Lee's with Abigail. And, and sometimes, you know, she gets there ahead, and it's right in the spot where it's closest to the entrance. And we look at that. You know, we know there's a lot of other Toyota Siennas, but, you know, immediately me and Benson go, oh, that's mom's car. You know, <laughs> it has to be because it's the closest to the entrance. And even though, you know, I look around, hey, no more any other parking space. And you see all the other cars, they're all lined up, you know, and... How did she do that? How did she get the best parking space? You know? So I got to tell you this story. One day I was driving by myself in the car and, and I, I was praying to the Lord. I said, Lord, could you do this, Lord? Because I know it's super packed. It's super busy in this parking lot right now. But could you give me a parking space just like, just like how you give it to John Lee? <laughs> I said, could you do that, Lord? Because I, I know sometimes it happens, but Lord, okay, could you do that? And, 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 and I got to tell you, in this street, it was an extremely busy street with meter parking. So I just said, Lord, it's in your hands, okay? Well, I got the parking space, but it was a half and a block away. Half a, half a block away, okay, from my destination. 
But I thank the Lord anyway. I say, thank you, Lord. I, I know, Lord. You gave me this car. Look, look I, I'm happy because, look, there's still other cars behind me. And just so happened this car just pulled out. And I got this. I thank you, Lord. And so I was about to put money in the meter, okay? You know what I noticed? There was an hour and a half of time <laughs> in the meter. <laughs> and, you know, I'm a pocket guy, right? And it was reason to celebrate. Here's the thing. Don't ever, you know, look at someone else. Oh, come, Lord, you're blessing that guy, but you're not blessing me. You know, the Lord will bless you however he wants to. And if he knows you've been faithful to him, he will reward you. Don't compare your blessings to others. Because sometimes, I'm going to tell you, it can be dangerous. Because you're going to let the green eye monster come out. You know what I'm talking? You're going to go get jealous. Hey, how come, Lord? What's up with that, Lord? And we just thank him. And we thank God for even our brothers and sisters' blessings. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for blessing John Lee with always the best parking space, you know? Because sometimes I'm in the car, too, with her, right? And so it works out fine. No, but we know, you know, whatever God gives you, be thankful for it. Amen? I want you to look what it says here in Acts 10, 34 to 35. Let, let's read together. Ready? Go. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. Are you doing what is right in the eyes of God now? Not according to the ways of man, but you know what the word of God says. You're doing what is right according to the word. If you are, look what the scripture says. He will bless you, right? Because he will not show favoritism. As long as you're living a life that is right, that is true to him, yeah, his goodness will shine forth in, his, in, in your life. And, and, and the thing is, I want you to understand, he'll never stop loving you. Even though you're sinning, even though you're doing things that you know are displeasing to him, he will not stop loving you. If your heart really belongs to him, yes, you are saved. I don't believe that, you know, you can lose your salvation because of sin in your life. I mean, I mean, where it's just like, you know, every now and then you're sinning, you're doing things wrong. Some people believe, oh, I'm going to lose my salvation. No, I believe if your heart really belongs to Christ, yeah, you are saved. But the thing is, yeah, he will not stop loving you. But I'm going to tell you, don't expect that those wonderful, grandeur blessings that you're asking for, right? You know, sometimes they will not come forth because of the fact that, you know, you're not living the life that he wants you to live. And, and that's, that's the thing. He will keep loving you, but sometimes the blessings will not flow in your life because you chose to live a life that is the disobedient to him. And that's the honest truth. I know some people don't like to hear that. I talk to people and say, no, don't talk about it, it like that, Pastor Ben. I said, no, I have to because it's the word of God. Amen? God, he will reward you if you live according to his ways live according to his word i want you to look at point number three now it says here the bible guarantees that the lord's purposes and plans for your life will prevail i want you to read it with me what it says here in proverbs 19 21 ready go there are many plans in a man's heart nevertheless the lord's what counsel that will stand and you know sometimes right we can come up with 1001 ideas of how we can carry out our plans or, um, or, our, or our ambitions for our lives. But, you know, if your mind and your heart is filled with the word of God, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to always end up following God's ways and his plans simply because your heart knows his word and you know his counsel will not disappoint you. And I got to say that the very fact that there are times, right, you know, when you know you're, you're in a heap of trouble, right? You, you've done something that you know wasn't good. Suddenly, your heart will speak to you because your heart is filled with the Word of God. And you're going to know what to do. You're going to know uh, what you need to do to get yourself out of this predicament you're in. But sometimes, you know, we, we, we kind of go, Lord, I, I don't want to do that, though. You know, sometimes we've got to humble ourselves. Sometimes we've got to, you know, ask for forgiveness. And sometimes we don't want to do that. But, you know, your heart knows. Because, remember, who's in your heart? 
Jesus is. You know, former President Ronald Reagan in his autobiography is, is called An American Life. This is what he writes. Just listen. This is what uh, former President Ronald uh, Reagan wrote in his book. He says, I was raised to believe that God had a plan for everyone and that seemingly random twists of fate are all part of his plan. My mother, a small woman with auburn hair and a sense of optimism that ran as deep as the cosmos, told me that everything in life happened for a purpose. She said all things were part of God's plan, even the most disheartening setbacks. And in the end, everything worked out for the best. If something went wrong, she said, you didn't let it get you down. You stepped away from it, stepped over it, and moved on. Later on, she added, something good will happen and you will find yourself thinking. If I hadn't had that problem back then, then this better thing that did happen wouldn't have happened to me. After I lost a job at Montgomery Ward, I left home again in search of work. Although I didn't know it then, I was beginning a journey that would take me a long way from Dixon and fulfill all my dreams and then some. My mother, as usual, was right. And sometimes things not going to make sense. But just like Reagan's mom, she knows that God knows all. God is infinite in his wisdom. We are not. We are finite in our wisdom. We, our wisdom will only go so far. So you can trust that God knows what he's doing. Uh, I want you to look what it says here in Psalm 119, verses 10 through 12. Read it with me. Ready? Go. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have what? Hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O oh Lord, teach me your statutes. Like I said, the word of God is hidden in your heart. For what reason? That I may not sin against you. That's why it's so important, you know, as, as, as pastors, as leaders of the church, we always, you know, stress this very important point. Get in the word. Grab your Bible. Read it. Meditate on it. Eat of it. Because... You can call yourself a Christian, but if you're not in the Word, I'm going to tell you, trouble will come, and you're going to start to panic. You're not going to know what to do because your heart is not going to speak to you. At the moment that trouble comes, you're going to start pacing all around. You're going to start to worry. You're going to start to be anxious. But here's the thing. When you're in the Word, then relax. I'm here. And God says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You know, and suddenly the Word of God speaks to you. And you realize you're not alone. You realize God's counsel is upon you because He's speaking to you at the very moment when you need Him the most. Amen? And you've got to listen for His voice. You've got to realize He does speak to you because your Word, His Word is hidden. It's, it's, it's there. Because you're not always going to think about His Word at all times right that's impossible right to think of his word you know every minute every second no but when you need it the most it will come forth because it's hidden in your heart and that's why the psalmist can say blessed are you O lord teach me your statutes and he realized yeah it's truly from the very hand of god that he will bless you and when this happens you know you're going to always want his plans to prevail in your life you're only going to seek his ways because you realize his ways will always bring forth his goodness. And you will know that only his best will come forth. Because he truly wants to what? Prosper you. I want you to read this scripture. I know this scripture. We say it a lot. <laughs> you know, we, we recite it a lot in Jeremiah 29, 11. Read it with me. Ready? Go. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to what? Prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future that's that's what god's ultimate plan for you and for me to give you a future a beautiful future wonderful hope knowing that you're going to be blessed in every way i want you to look at point number four now it says the bible guarantees that if you remain 
humble. <laughs> God will guide you. Is it, is it easy to be humble? Not always, right? And, and you know, uh, I remember uh, I was teaching a Bible study at the park one time, and this guy came in with a T-shirt, and it says, uh, Be humble, H-U-M-B-O, no grumble. <laughs> you know, and, and there's so much wisdom in that. Because usually, right, the fact is, when we grumble, it's because what? We got pride. We think we know better. That's why we're grumbling, <laughs> you know? And, and because we're not humble before our brothers and sisters. We're not humble before God. And, and, and the very fact is, you know, God, He knows that the prideful, they, they're not going to listen, okay? Look what it says there in Psalm 25, 9. Let's read it together. Ready? Go. The humble He guides in justice, and the humble He teaches His way. The humble He guides injustice right what is right and wrong and the humble he teaches his way so what about the prideful well he will try <laughs> to teach them but often the case right the prideful have an unteachable heart because they think they know better than everyone else in some cases they think they even know better than god and I, I'm going to tell you, I, I was guilty of that, you know, early on in my Christian walk with the Lord. There many times I called my brother Walton, and I said, Walton, I thought you said my life going to get better. <laughs> I don't see it. You know, I, I thought everything would fall into place. I don't, I don't understand it. And my brother would be so patient with me, and he said, Ben, trust in God. So many times, i got to tell you, I'll be honest, I was like, I, I don't see how this christian thing is going to work out for me i actually thought that you know and but he was there telling me no stay strong in your faith you're going to see it then you're going to see how god will just take a hold of your life everything will fall into place and it did as i continue to walk in faith as i continue to trust in him god never let me down amen and he won't let you down either because the fact is he wants to know your heart is humble before him that you got to remember, He is God. And, and He is the one that will bring forth His goodness if you just continually trust in Him. You know, i got to tell you about Muhammad Ali. You know, when he was in his prime of his boxing career, and he was about to take off on an airplane flight. And the stewardess reminded him to fasten his seatbelt. He said, you know, Mr. Ali, you got to fasten your seatbelt just like everybody else. But he came back brashly and he said, Superman don't need no seatbelt. That's what he said. And the stewardess quickly came back. Yeah, and Superman don't need no airplane either. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ali, right, he was humbled at that point. So he said, oh, okay. <laughs> so he fastened his seatbelt. <laughs> and here's the thing, right? That is why God, he will gladly guide those who are humbled before him. He has no problem with this. Because he knows if you're really humble before him, you're not going to keep on questioning him. You're not going to always go, okay, well, God, let me go check with my mother first. Or let me go check with my wife first, and then I'll get back to you. <laughs> no, if you know it's God, just go with what he said. But just talk with your spouse or whatever. He said, this is what the Lord is showing to me. And, and, and you got to, you know, put God first and realize that God will not steer you wrong because it doesn't matter. You know, you could say, but that's my loved one. You know, I trust this person. Well, are they perfect? No. Who is perfect? Only God is. Only Jesus is. Why would you want to listen to anyone else but God, right? God will not stir you wrong. Because even the person who you think loves you the most in this entire world, can they stir you wrong? Yeah, because they are imperfect. But God is perfect in every way and god knows right with the prideful they usually have a bad attitude okay and that's why god he will try i'm going to tell you he will try his best to, to get you you know uh to to work with his plan for your life but if you keep resisting him you keep saying no nah, lord no somebody told me no nah, i shouldn't do that no there's going to come a point that you know god can't really lead you anymore you see what i'm saying it's really up to you because he gives you free will. He gives you that choice whether or not you're going to follow him. So the question now is, how lowly does God want us to go? 
Well, the scriptures are very clear. Jesus tells us. Look at Matthew 18, 4. Let's read it together. Ready? Go. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as what? This little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And you know, as a little child, right, you're totally dependent on your parent. And you will follow your parent, you know, in whatever, usually anyway, <laughs> whatever they ask of you because you're depending on them, right? I mean, you know if your parent was to leave you, hey, you're not going to have any food. You're not going to have any clothes. You know, you're not going to have any provisions. I'm saying like a three or four year old, right? They know, right? They have to be totally dependent on their parents and they're not going to survive without their parents. And you know, it should be the same as a child of who? The song we just sang. I am a child of God, right? And, and we got to let God be the one to direct us, to guide us, to lead us. Because we got to have that attitude like we're little children. We don't know what we're doing. And we need God to show us the way. I want you to look what it says here in Proverbs 22, 6. Read it with me. Ready? Go. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not, what? Depart from it. And usually we, we think, right, that this verse relates to human parents and their children. Yeah, it does, but I want to tell you something. As I was reading this, I felt like the Holy Spirit telling me, you know what? This also pertains to us and Papa God. Because guess what? He's training us. With what? His Word. Right? Because here's the thing. When we first accepted Christ, you can think of us as spiritual babes or spiritual babies. Right? When we first, you know, made it say, oh, yeah, I received Christ into my heart. I want to make him Lord of my life. And, and I remember when I did that, I was crying. I was like, I'm going to do whatever you ask, Lord. My life is all yours. You know, and I remember calling Walter and said, I made a decision for Jesus. And then he was like, oh, he was like, oh, stoked. He was so happy, right? But, but, you know, that's the thing. When we made that decision for Christ, that very first moment when we heard the word of God and we realized how real he was, you know, we hung on to every word of God. I remember that's how, at least how I was. But guess what happens <laughs> over time, right? As we, you know, hear it from different teachers and we read all these different books and, and, and we, we, we study the scriptures in great detail, sometimes we start to depend on him less and less. Because sometimes, I'm going to tell you, for some people, they become like Mr. or Miss Know-it-all. They say, I know the scripture. I read like, oh, how many books on this topic? But I ask him, but are you listening to the voice of the Lord? Because sometimes we get so wrapped up with everything what the internet has to say, with all these books, what they have to say, suddenly we stop listening to the voice of God. I'm going to tell you, it happens. And it, 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 sometimes it, it will affect me too, <laughs> where I just think, okay, I'm just going to read what it says on the internet and, you know, this uh, devotional, and uh, that's good enough. I don't have to read the scriptures anymore. Uh, I just read what this uh, guy, he's really good. He's a very well-known pastor, a very well-known teacher. I just read what he says, and I'm good to go for the day. No, God still says, no, get in my word, because you need my word. Because I'm training you, training you to be a warrior. I'm training you to have great victories in your life. But you must embrace my word. You must do my word, child. Because if you don't, yeah, the enemy's coming. He's going to try and hit your heart. You must be trained up in my word, God says. So why? He says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, what? He will not depart from it. And so that's why we got to let the Holy Spirit train us. Because if we don't let him train us, guess what? It's going to be throughout our lives. Every time there's going to be a situation, a small situation. Maybe, I don't know, maybe uh, you heard gossip at your office that you uh, might be laid off. And suddenly, you're <gasps> oh no. But instead, we should say, Lord I know you're speaking to me. I'm not going to fear. I trust in you. Okay, that's being trained up in, in the word as if you know the word of God is speaking to you. You're not going to fall apart when life situations take place. And, and God, he will show himself when 
those times, it can get really heated up. And you know that God, he will not disappoint you. And the very fact is sometimes we do get upset at God and sometimes we may question him whether he really knows what he's doing with our lives. But we got to remember, we cannot think that God thinks like us. Like I said earlier, he's infinite. I mean, there's no end to his wisdom. But to our wisdom, there is only so much, right? We can take in a lot of God's word, but still, it's not infinite. I want you to look what it says here, Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. Read it with me. Ready? Go. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my way, ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So his thoughts are not like our thoughts. You know, his ways are not like our ways. <laughs> okay? Because... You know, we, we only can see with our physical eyes, right? And, you know, if we could only see what's happening in the spiritual realm, maybe we, we wouldn't doubt God so much. But as we pray, as we seek God, there's things happening all around us. Angels at, at, at God's, you know, uh, leading, they're sent out to protect us, to watch over us, to make things happen so that we will experience His blessings. And... You know, because here's the thing. When our heads get too caught up in the clouds, we must come back down to planet Earth and realize that God is God and that we are not. Because sometimes we, we may think, but I think I know better than God. <laughs> you know, I think because God, he's taking a long time. But you know what? We got to get our heads out of those clouds because sometimes they can get too far up there. Bring ourselves back down and realize, you know, Lord, I'm down here. <laughs> you are all the way up there. You are above me oh, infinitely, Lord. And when we are humble like that before the Lord, that's when God can start working wonders in your life. Amen? You know, Pastor Dwight L. Moody, you probably heard of him. He wrote this. Just listen to this. He says, Moses spend his first 40 years thinking he was somebody, okay? He spent his second 40 years learning that he was a nobody. And then he spent his third 40 years discovering what God can do with a nobody. Isn't that true? Because, yeah, he was, it seemed like he was somebody. He, you know, he was, you know, working for Pharaoh and all that. And, and now he's back in the wilderness leading the people of God and yeah he had to become like a nobody to be used by God in such a mighty way so it's all about humility how low can you go be humble in spirit so that God can work miracles in your life amen I want you to take a look at the bottom line verses now and ultimately we, we got to remember that we can pray and, and plan all that we want. But in the very end, right, if you're seeking God, you know, his ways and, 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 and you know, his will for our lives will, will take place. It will come forth. But don't be disappointed if it's not exactly what you asked for or prayed for. Because, like I said earlier, you got to trust that when you ask God for something, you know, you ask from your heart, he always desires to give his very best to you. So you just got to keep walking in the Word of God. You got to keep walking strong towards Him because He will not let you down. Look what it says here in Proverbs 16.1. Let's read it together. Ready? Go. The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. And what does that mean? The plans of your heart. You can keep planning all you want. It's good. If you're in prayer, you're planning. But ultimately, the answer... It's from where? It's from the Lord. It's from the tongue of the Lord. The Lord will speak it. The Lord will provide it. He will give it to you as you just continue to look to Him. So you can keep planning. It's okay. But ultimately, if you know you're desiring God's will, yeah, it will come forth. I want you to look what it says there in John 14, 25 to 26. Let's read it together. Ready? Go. 
These things I have spoken to you while I'm still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. Wow. And here, you can look at this verse, right? You can see that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the triune God, right? They're working together for what reason? To help us, to counsel us through this life. You can see Jesus, when he was on this planet Earth, he was giving instructions to the people on how to live. To live a life that is truly holy and pure unto God. And then we can see in this verse, it says that Father God is giving us what? The Holy Spirit. For what reason? To counsel us, right? And the Holy Spirit's part is to help us to remember what Jesus taught us while he was here. And so, you know, you can see, they're, they're very, I can say he is very concerned because God is one, right? He's very concerned about how we live our lives. Because, you know, I got to tell you, and uh, my brother will probably tell you the same. We hear from a lot of people, and, you know, the thing is, we were like that too, where we just kind of think, oh, as long as, as, as I'm going to church, as I'm, you know, doing the Christian thing, you know, um, I'm good to go. You know, God loves me. By grace, I'm saved. I can just live however I want. And it's okay because I'm a Christian. I tell everyone I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. And don't you tell me that I'm not. And, and that's the thing, right? And, and, and you know, when you ask them, so, so what kind of things are you doing in your life? And they say, none of your business, <laughs> right? And I go, okay. And you know, right, that probably there are things they know they're doing that they're not supposed to be doing. But the fact is, right, God, he requires this of us because he wants to know. Because the Bible says he, he really wants to see if you really love him. And the way that you show to him how you really love him, you must obey his word. You must do what it says. And I want you to read this uh, last verse with me. Romans 8, 14 to 15. Read it with me. Ready? Go. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are what? Children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes... You fearful slaves. Oh, sorry, I got something mixed up there. Okay, instead, you receive God's Spirit when He adopted you as His own children. Now we call Him Abba, Father. And you know, God gives us the best example of what a loving and caring Father is all about. And just like any parent, right? They will always be there to counsel you, to speak life and words of wisdom to you when you need it the most. And you know, I, I got to tell you, you know, yesterday I was in the office. I was just kind of like preparing the sermon. And I just see Joel just kind of like uh, hanging out with um, his dad, you know, Walton. And, and you, know, his, you know, you can see Joel just like just taking in every word that's from Walton, you know, because, you know, Walton's giving him fatherly advice. I go, wow, you know, that, that's, that's how it should be, right, where a, a son comes to the father and some Benson will come to me with a situation or problem. And I'll do my best, right? We'll, I'll go through the Word and say, you know, this is the Word of God. This is what it says. And, and you can see, like, they're hanging on every word from the Father. And mothers too, right? But the fact is, you know, that's how it should be with us. Are we hanging on to the very words of God? Realizing these very words can bring forth His goodness in great abundance. That His Word will bring forth life upon your life if you choose to do what it says. Because here's the thing. We've got to look to our Father. As our children look to us, right? Because it's like I saw how Joe just looking up to, to, to Walton, you know, because that's his dad, right? You know, I remember me and Walton, we would do the same with our dad. You know, we would just sit at, at, our, uh, at our dad's feet sometimes and we just talk to him and our dad would just share, you know, things with us that would really touch our hearts. We gotta make sure we're doing these kinds of things too. These, we are having these kinds of moments. We're spending time with him, so that we're we're gonna have such a closeness to his heart. Amen. Because yeah, you know, tomorrow is Father's Day, and we gotta make sure we're we're looking to our fathers. Yes, but ultimately we gotta look to Father God. In everything, every aspect in our life, you're going to see how you're going to be blessed in every way. 
I'd like to conclude by showing you this video. Betsy, could you go ahead and play this? It's talking about looking up to Father God. After every catch he makes on the baseball field, he'll look to you to make sure you're smiling. When her friends make the fourth grade pep squad, but she doesn't, she'll look to you for comfort. When she feels misunderstood by her brothers and sisters, she'll look to you for understanding. They'll never stop looking to you. When she walks down the aisle on that magical day, she'll look to you to bring peace to her anxious heart. When he plays his first concert with his new band, he'll look to your face in the crowd. When she makes choices that will break your heart, she'll eventually look to you for forgiveness and restoration. They'll never stop looking to you. And you can never stop. You must never stop looking to God. They don't need you to be perfect. They just need you to be authentic and offer them Jesus anyway. They need you to try your very best. And even if you fail, they need to see you rise up again. They need you to follow hard after Jesus as best you can because they will never stop looking to you. Son, I'm writing these words to you because you are, and always have been, the legacy I've wanted to leave. And now, it's your moment. It's your chance to leave a legacy of loving Jesus with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. They'll never stop looking to you. And that's the way God created it to be. Happy Father's Day. Praise God. And so we realize we leave a legacy of loving Jesus. And that's, that's all that really it's about, you know, that... As we speak the word of God, you know, into our family's lives, you know, we know that the Holy Spirit will take over. The Holy Spirit will bring forth his power, his goodness, as we choose to live a life that is devoted to him. A life that is truly wanting nothing more than Jesus, ever so present in our lives. Why don't we go ahead, let's bow our heads, let's bow our hearts, let's come before our Father in heaven. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this message today. And we realize, Lord, truly, we want our families to, to, to make Jesus the first priority in our lives. And, and Lord, as, as being the fathers, the leaders of the household, Lord, we know you called us to, to do this very one thing, to let our family know that as we choose Jesus, as we choose to live for him, your goodness will continually flow. And that's the kind of legacy we all want to leave behind. That we want to see our, our, our future generations, our, our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren just simply loving Jesus. Father, that is our heart's desire. And Lord, will you help us? Because Lord, if we know that that's not really happening right now, Lord, we can make changes. We can turn things around with your help. But Lord, ultimately, Lord, we know we do this because we love you. And we want to be obedient to your word. And right now, with all our eyes closed, with our heads bowed, you're maybe saying, Lord, I realize I still have a lot of work to do. But it's okay, Lord. I know that you are with me and you know my heart. But Lord, I desire to live a life fully devoted to you and I want to leave that legacy with my family that it's all about loving Jesus with all of your heart your mind your soul your strength and I want to follow your words Lord I want to do as your word tells me so that my whole family will experience 
at the goodness that you offer so abundantly to those who believe in you. And if this is the cry of your heart right now, can you just raise your hand and say, that's me, so that I can pray for you. Hallelujah. Anyone else saying, Lord, that is my heart. I want to follow you all the days of my life. All you, Lord. Praise God. Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. You can put your hands down. Father God, you've seen all the hands that were raised, but most importantly, it's the hearts behind those hands saying, Lord, I desire you more than anything. Lord, forgive me if there are times that I kind of put you aside, that I didn't put you as first priority. But Lord, I want you to be first in every area of my life. I want to be devoted to you. Father, I just pray that your showers of blessings will come forth upon their lives as, as we continue to live a life that is true, that is devoted to you. Thank you, Lord, for what you have started and what you will continue to do in our lives. Because, Lord, our lives are all yours. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone says together, Amen. Let's all stand. Let's give God glory.